Non-invasive prenatal testing. Making an informed decision. This video, produced by KK Women's and Children's Hospital and Genetic Support Foundation, provides information about non-invasive prenatal testing, NIPT. What is non-invasive prenatal testing? Non-invasive prenatal testing, or NIPT, is an optional blood test that can be performed beginning at around 10 weeks of pregnancy and can screen for certain genetic conditions. How does NIPT work? Our blood contains fragments of our DNA, known as cell-free DNA. When a woman is pregnant, her blood will also contain DNA fragments from the placenta, which has a genetic makeup that is usually identical to that of the developing baby. By analyzing this DNA in mom's blood, it can be determined if there is an increased or decreased chance for certain genetic conditions. What conditions does NIPT screen for? Though this testing began as a screening for Down syndrome, over time the list of conditions being screened has grown. Today, in addition to Down syndrome, NIPT also screens for trisomy 18 and trisomy 13, and in some cases other conditions as well. The effects of the screened conditions vary tremendously, from very mild to severe. These conditions usually do not run in families, and with every pregnancy, there is some chance of one of these conditions. The chance that a pregnancy is affected with a condition depends on a number of factors, including the mother's age. Women of any age can have a baby with one of these conditions. What can NIPT tell me about my pregnancy? NIPT is a screening test that can determine if the chance of certain genetic conditions in a pregnancy is higher or lower. Since NIPT is a screening test and not a diagnostic test, it cannot give you yes or no answers. If results indicate a high or increased chance, then a diagnostic test, such as amniocentesis, can then be performed if the patient desires to determine whether the baby really has the condition or not. Amniocentesis, however, has a 0.3% chance of miscarriage, which is why not all women who are found to be high risk choose to pursue it. If the NIPT results indicate a low or decreased chance, the likelihood the baby has the condition is lower but not zero. Keep in mind that false positives and false negatives do occur with NIPT. The chance of a false positive or a false negative result depends on the condition tested for. How does NIPT compare to the first trimester screening FTS test? NIPT and FTS are both screening tests for Down syndrome. These two tests, however, have different strengths and limitations. FTS involves analyzing mom's blood for protein markers as well as an ultrasound in the first trimester. This ultrasound involves measuring a pocket of fluid at the back of the baby's neck. This measurement is known as the nuchal translucency, NT. Just like NIPT, FTS provides information regarding the chance of Down syndrome, trisomy 18 and trisomy 13. In addition to these conditions, the ultrasound measurements taken during FTS can also provide information that may suggest the possibility of other genetic conditions, as well as provide an early screen for some birth defects, including heart defects and neural tube defects. Although the FTS may provide information for a greater number of conditions, NIPT is a more accurate screening test for Down syndrome. Please remember that the DNA analyzed in NIPT is placental in origin, so discrepancies between the baby's DNA and that of the placenta can occur. There is no prenatal genetic screen that tests for everything. Even when the results of NIPT or FTS indicate a low likelihood, there is still some chance of a genetic condition or birth defect. If you decide to undergo prenatal genetic testing, your healthcare provider can help you decide which prenatal testing would be best for your specific situation. Some factors that may help answer this question are how far along you are in your pregnancy, your age at the time of delivery, your past medical and family history. Some women would prefer definitive answers, 
and since NIPT and FTS cannot provide that, they may choose to go straight to a more definitive test, such as amniocentesis. On the other hand, some women may feel comfortable with their chances of a genetic condition or are confident that even if the baby did have a genetic condition, it wouldn't alter their pregnancy plans. Or they may prefer not to face the decision of whether or not to have an amniocentesis if the FTS or NIPT comes back indicating an increased chance for a genetic condition, especially since amniocentesis has an associated risk of miscarriage. In these cases, some women may decide not to undergo any prenatal screening. So how do you decide about prenatal testing? The decision to undergo any prenatal genetic test is personal and should reflect your values, personality, beliefs, and needs. This decision should be made in consultation with a healthcare professional. There are many prenatal tests available, and your healthcare professional will be able to determine, based on a number of factors, which test is appropriate to offer you. Your decision may be very different than the path your friend or neighbor might take, and that's okay. In most cases, prenatal genetic testing is a choice, and the best way to make a decision that is right for you is to be informed.